Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 32 of the Chosen One Star Wars podcast here on Game Domain. As always, I'm your host, Jason, joined by my co-host, Captain. Howdy, all. All right, so, um, I mean, this is just crazy to say, and it makes me very excited. Uh, the moment is finally here. Um, as of the time we're recording this video uh, here on Friday night, uh, October 23rd, um, we are one week out. Um, from the first episode of Mandalorian Season 2. Um, and by the time that you guys are all watching this episode uh, uh, on Monday, Five yeah, on Monday, um, it'll be a lot closer. Um, so, I mean, this is just, you know, something that we've all been waiting for for so long. Um, you know, personally, really, since the second that I finished watching that episode eight back right in between, yeah, right, that I think it came out right in between Christmas and, and New Year's. Um, yeah, I just, the second that it came out, um, I, I, uh, I, I wanted more, like you just said, Captain. And, um, I think everybody did the whole, the whole Star Wars fan base. I mean, it was just such an amazing show. Um, it, it was such a, you know, warm welcome by the Star Wars community that everybody just, just absolutely loved this show. Um, you know, first season was eight episodes. We're getting a second season that's consisting of eight episodes. Um, all the epi- most of the episodes, I believe five out of the eight are being written by, um, John Favreau. Um, one's being written by Dave Filoni. Um, one is being written by um, I can't remember. He's a uh, his first name starts with a P and his second name starts with a K. I can't remember his name, but he um, he he uh, directed um, I believe episode six, the like the prison breakout episode. Um, so I, I personally didn't like that episode, but from everything else that I've heard about the director, he's he, he's a he's a fantastic director. So I'm, I'm I'm fine with him writing an episode. I just personally didn't like the story he was given for that episode. Um, I just wasn't a big fan of of that episode at all. Um, but uh, yeah, so he's gonna be writing one episode, and there's one more. I can't. I, I believe it might be Ron Howard's daughter. Um, who's uh writing the uh, who directed one of the episodes. I can't remember which episode she directed. Um, I want to say it may have been episode four. Um, I think Deborah Chow directed three. I know Dave Filoni directed one. Uh, Deborah Chow directed three and seven. Uh, Taika Waititi directed eight. Um, oh, Rick Fuka, Rick Fuka Yuma, Fukuyama. I can't, I can't. Th- yeah, yeah, that's the guy who that that's the that's the guy who's writing one of the episodes who directed episode six. Um, I think I, it's definitely first name's Rick, last name starts with an F, and I think it's something like that. It sounds Japanese, but he's not Japanese. Um, and then, which is kind of weird. And then um, Dave Filoni also directed episode five, and I so then I, yeah, I guess that would leave four or two and or whatever for um, Ron Howard's daughter to have directed. Um, so. I believe yeah, those are the those are going to be the writers for this season. Um, and this season is just you know literally right around the corner. Just you know a few more uh, a few more sun ups and sun downs before uh, we're going to be uh, able to watch this episode. I will probably stay up till uh, midnight. I, I didn't do that for the I didn't do that for the first season because I didn't want to watch it while I was tired. I'd rather like enjoy it while I you know what I mean. I'd rather enjoy it. Um, and also I believe I think they release at 12 a.m. Uh, Pacific standard time which for me here on the east coast uh, uh, in the u.s is 3 a.m so i believe that's probably the reason why i didn't stay up i don't know if they're gonna um i don't know if they're gonna change that but i know that was definitely the case i think more than a few times i'm hoping maybe they'll push it to like a 9 p.m pacific standard time and, and at 12 a.m eastern standard time a little bit more plausible than having to make uh the you know uh, uh, us eastern seaboard people um you know stay stay up to three middle in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'll, I'll probably stay up unless it's at three in the, three in the morning, then I definitely will not. Um, but I, I mean, it's just, you know, it, 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 I can't believe it's here. Very, very excited. And, um, you know, before we get into some specific predictions on how we think the season's going to go, how we think the first few episodes are going to look, um, captain, if you just have any, you know, broad general things you want to touch on about how much you're excited for the show and whatnot. Man, I've been watching, I've literally just watched, watched the, uh, the yeah, official trailer, trailer and then the special, special look trailer, trailer at the same time, time while we've been talking. talking. And, and I just keep getting more and more hyped every time it comes on. Because you just spot things every so often. Like you watch it and then you watch it again it's like, oh, I didn't see that last time. And every time I keep doing that, I just want, I just want it to, like, it's, it's what, eight days away? I just want those eight days. Yeah. Come and go so I can watch it already. Yeah. Um... And yeah, so I mean, I guess that just kind of brings us into, you know, direct predictions. Um, If we would have recorded this video about two weeks ago, um, I I think that definitely my predictions and my opinions on how this season is going to go would be 
drastically different, not even relatively close to what I'm going to predict here today, except with one thing, which, you know, involves the cameos that we'll get to in a little bit here that everybody's suspecting. Um, but Captain, I don't know about you about, you know, I'm just, I'm referring to the news that, um, the, you know, I don't think anything's really been confirmed, but it's been rumored very heavily that John Favreau has already started, uh, writing, um, season three, and it's going to begin production in early 2021, or in late 2020, early 2001, so I guess like December, January, February, whatever, um, and come out in the fall of next year. Um, this is kind of brown bra- groundbreaking news. Uh, I-, I was confused as to why it didn't really get as much publicity in the Star Wars community as I was expecting and as, that I, th- and as I think it deserves. Um, because I, I really think that this is very, very important because, um, you know, it, this changes the whole dynamic of season two, because if this was supposed to be a two season thing, um, and you know, the show was supposed to come to an end at the end of the season, then the plot is completely spelled out differently. And that's what I thought was going to happen. I didn't know that they were going to keep stretching this into multiple seasons. And obviously it was such a success that I'm sure Disney wants to keep doing that. But the one thing I'm a little hesitant about is just if we stretch out the story a little bit too much, depending on how many seasons we have. Um, Because, you know, I mean, there's already working on a season three, and then if we get a season three, and who knows, they extend it to a season four. I I mean, you know, if this show keeps going on like that, I think the story will hurt from that. Um, especially if it diverts from the original uh, plot and and motives that we have going on right now, which is Mando trying to reunite, um, you know, the child with his people. Uh, whether you know he's going to reunite by his people, whether he's going to reunite it with with the with the the species, which I really really hope and pray to God that does not happen, because I do not want to go to a planet with a bunch of Yodas. Um, I think that that it's best to be kept a mystery that only Yoda, Yaddle, and the child are are part of that race, and we don't know the name of the race, and we don't know anything about them obviously just that they're very strong with the force but that's all we need to know um but you know i I always thought that by his people obviously he's going to be returning them to the jedi um we get some of that we got some of that uh in the trailer as what which was you know taken from lines between the uh, mandalorian blacksmith um who worked underground in that in that city that we saw in episodes one two three and then seven and eight um so who worked, uh, you know, as the underground, you know, the blacksmith of Mandalorian for the little Mandalorian uh, holdout under there, telling Mando um, that he has to get this baby to, to the Jedi because that's that's where his powers come from. Um, so I, I, that was that's obviously the main glaring plot point. If we weren't going to have a season three, we'd be predicting for that plot point to end at the end of this season, and it'd be a completely different story. But now that we have a season three, we know that this season, no matter what, no matter if the series ends in season three or has a season four or season five or whatever. This season, almost in a way, might end up just being a filler season and a bridge from seasons one to three. Because they could easily have made a season one to lay down the groundwork. They're planning on making a season three to wrap everything up. And then this season two is just the bridge in between of how to get from point A to point to point B. And, um, I, I mean, if that's the case, which in my personal opinion, I think it might be. Um, I, I'm sure all the episodes and the story and everything is going to be fantastically done. But I think it won't have as much of an overarching um, impact um, on the story as a whole, and, and I think that because you look at some of the episodes um, in the first season, and as great as they were, and I'm not crit- crit- critiquing the show at all because it's just a, one of the you know one of the best shows in recent TV history, even though it's on a streaming service, just one of the best shows in recent TV history, and, and it's not just a great Star Wars show. It's just a great show in general, and that's why I was able to captivate so many casual fans or, or even non-Star Wars fans to watch it on Disney+. Plus. But um, I just think that because you know we saw this a little bit like episode 4 and episode 5 um, of season – and episode 6. 4, 5, and 6 all kind of served as just TV episodes, and, and by that I mean – in a TV series where you have 20 episodes in a season, right? Like most TV series do, where they take up, you know, a, a couple months out of the year, uh, you know, about one episode a week, and, and and it ends up to being about 20 episodes. Um, now, in those 20 episodes, you're gonna have at least 10 of them, which are just filler TV episodes with a minor plot that doesn't really do anything to the grand story. And if you skipped over them, you wouldn't miss anything. Um, I, I personally believe that. If you don't watch four, five, and six, those those three episodes in the first season of The Mandalorian, and you kind of go straight from season three to, to from episode three to, to episode seven, you really don't skip a beat other than the introduction of Cara Dune's character. 
Um, cause in episode five, no real, uh, important characters are introduced to us other than obviously the Boba Fett, um, you know, looking figure, uh, who appears at the end. Um, but you know, that didn't come to end, come to fruition. You know, that didn't really do anything by the end of season one. Maybe we'll get something about that in season two and we'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about the cameos. But other than that, and other than the introduction of Cara Dune's character, nothing else really impacted the story for the rest of that season. So what I fear is that this entire season feels like that with just a few cameos here and there just to please the fans um and i'd like to think that that doesn't i'd like to think that mando makes serious strides into reuniting the baby um the child with the jedi and and, and finding clues and whatnot and, and leading and you know the different cameos like if ahsoka comes in there and helps that um you know that would be ideal but i'm just afraid that this is kind of almost going to be a filler season and then they'll wrap it up in season three but you know i i have a lot of faith in john favreau and dave filoni and that whole crew to to kind of you know get that done so that's just a little bit of, of my speculation on, on to how my my outlook on this uh season changed with the announcement of a season uh three so before we get into you know specific predictions and then discussion about cameos a little bit later captain do you just have anything to touch on and kind of what i just talked about as to how you think like the main uh the, you know the main idea of season two could be now with the impact of knowing that there's a season three right around the corner i actually think season two is going to be incredibly uh heavy on story because if you think about mm -hmm. it, um, I can't remember who said it, but someone said that the, the longest a TV season, uh, a TV show should ever run, is seven seasons. Seven seasons is like the beauty point. If it's a nice, if it's a, you know, a big overlonging story and all that kind of stuff, it can run a little bit longer. Um, with like things like Stargate that ran for ten seasons and, and like Futurama that ran for God knows how many. But if you, if it's if it's going to get let's say a maximum of four seasons. You've, you've got, got to end on the fourth season. season. You've, you've got, got to build up to the end, midway through the third season, yeah. so you have a season and a half of story. Now, it's quite possible that season three is going to be the last one. It would it would make sense for the Mandalorian story to end somewhere around season three. Big, Star Wars is always big on doing three story arcs, you know, episode four, five, six, one, two, three, and then the other ones. Uh, so, if we did... Season 1, which was the introduction, Season 3, which is the ending, Season 2 has to, like, give us a bunch of, it has to start a bunch of stories, and then answer a bunch of questions, and also bring us some new questions, and at the same time, build up the ramp up of Season 3, which then leads to the end. So I I don't think it's going to be, like you call, you know, the, the episodes in the middle of Season 1, TV episodes. Um, I think they'll be heavy on story in some aspects. But just, just by, by looking at some of the trailers, I know what some of the episodes are going to be off the bat. Like, yeah. Like the one that looks like kind of the, the ice planet that kind of looks like Ilum, that that might have some correlation to, you know, yeah. the Jedi kyber crystals and, and hunting down the history of the Jedi and whatnot. The one with the, uh, the, one with the speed bikes jumping off thing, that's clearly another Prison Break episode of some sort, um, which yeah. I don't mind. I like the first uh, Prison Break episode. It was kind of funny. But I think if they go for a season four... They probably don't know at the minute if there will be, so they've most likely planned out season three as the final season. So everything that they filmed for season two will most likely be answering questions for season one, setting up questions for the possibility of being answered at the end of season two or some part through season three. And I think the fact that we've got these really good uh, script writers and, and directors and all this kind of stuff actually on the project, that they know that, hey, we, we, we might, we, we, they might have greenlit season three, but that doesn't mean that they've greenlit season four. So everything we do in season two has to like have a nice bow around it, so season three can be focused on. If there's a possibility of season four, it can focus on you know helping up season four and all kind of stuff. If season going to be the end, then season three has to also tie up in a nice bow. And they did it with the first one. First season ended with a nice bow. We got a, a decent, you know, ooh, what's going to happen next in season two. And, you know, everything else was tied up. We got some questions that need uh, answers to, like uh, the, the Darksaber, how he got hold of it and all that kind of stuff. Where's Baby Yoda's dudes and all that kind of stuff. What's, uh, what's everything going to happen? But we got, we got questions answered in Season 1, and then we got, like, three main questions uh, on the setup. And it was nice and tied up. It's, I bet your Season 2 will be nice and tied up in a bow as well. There'll, be, there'll probably be a dull episode. There's always a dull episode in a TV show. And it might be dull to me. It might not be dull to other people, but it will be classed as a dull because it'll get like the lowest overall viewings. That's going to happen. I know that will happen. It might be two episodes, which would be a shame because there's only eight episodes a season. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there's only going to be eight episodes. So I think they've, they've sat down, because they would have known they were getting the season two probably towards the end of season one. So yeah, they definitely know. And gone, right, what do we need? Who do we want to introduce? Who do we want to potentially kill off or get rid of and do all this kind of stuff? And they would have sat down, they would have done like a massive storyboard. And, and then, then when, when season, season three happened, happened it would have brought the season two storyboard, storyboard next to it and gone, right, what can we connect up? What don't we need? What can we do? And, and they would have... They're, they're not stupid, okay? Like, like the way that they connected the, the reboot the, of uh, Clone Wars to the, you know, the original Clone Wars. That was great. That worked. It, there was a bit of a time skip, but everything fit. The story kept going. It was great. I mean, apart from the stupid pilots that can outfly anyone in the entire universe because they can. Let's not even get close then. But they're not stupid, so I'm, I'm really thinking season two is actually going to be really heavy story based. Um, yeah, I mean, I, and I completely agree with you. I think it definitely could. I, and that's what I hope. And I have the faith that that will happen. I just, you know, I, I'm a little bit skeptical about kind of what I explained. Um, but obviously, you know, that would, that would be, I hope that that doesn't happen. And even if that does happen, I'm sure there's still going to be fantastic episodes, um, and, and whatnot, but I just hope that this season definitely still has a lasting impact on the overarching story of everything. Um, you know, given the fact that now we know that there's still more Mandalorian down the line in the next few years. And whether that's just a season three or whether that's, um, you know, a season three and a season four and, and, and what have you. Um, all right. So, so, you know, now just touching on that kind of broad topic now, you know, we're going to go into, I'm just going to give some of my key predictions as to what I think going to happen um, in this season. Then captain, you're going to give some of yours. Just don't, we're not going to bring up cameos right now. Cause that's going to be a separate topic that we'll discuss after this, before we wrap up um, because that's going to be a big topic uh, in and of itself. Um, so I, I, I think that, um, really the main plot of this season is just going to be kind of getting to right on the cusp of reuniting, um, the child with his people. Um, obviously, you know, in my opinion, being the Jedi and not his species, um, I, I think maybe there's a possibility that in the path of reuniting, uh, the child with his people, they come across a member of that, another member of that species, or I, I just please don't it, it, see if, if we come across like another member that's maybe there's another force sensitive elder member of that species. Um, I, I, I guess that'd be tolerable, but anything more than just one more of the of the child and yoda and yaddle species um that 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 would be a little bit too much so i'd like to think they don't go down that route but um maybe you know in a way it would i could see them definitely having maybe like a, one other member of the species an elder member who says you know he is strong with the force you got to bring him to the jedi um and you know mando will, will find that that uh elder uh member of the species and the you know the elder member will tell him that but um I, I think that definitely we're going to go through a series of just trips to different planets like we did in season one. Um, and each individual episode, each individual planet, wherever they go to, is going to bring like some sort of hint, some sort of clue, some sort of step in the right direction to reuniting the child with, with the Jedi. Um, and then, you know, I think the cameos all kind of fit into that as a whole. I'm not going to talk about specifics now because we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I think that all those cameos are going to kind of weave into giving hints to Mando, suggestions, telling him certain places to go. Um, I think will I think it'll also be very lore heavy. I know you said it would be very story, very plot heavy. Um, I wouldn't be surprised as to um, be, being a lot of like deep lore heavy, but not to the kind of like how Clone Wars was, where there's a whole lot of deep, deep lore, but on the surface, it's just a regular casual fan show. You know what I mean? Where casual fans can watch Star Wars: The Clone Wars. And they don't need to know about all the little specific hidden lore things that, you know, all of us diehard Star Wars fans pick up on. Um, and I think we saw that even in the first season of The Mandalorian, like with, you know, the history of the Mandalorian race in general and kind of how they vaguely talk about that. As a casual fan, as a casual Star Wars fan who doesn't know much about The Mandalorians because they're not very prominent in any of the main movies. Um, they're more of, you know, like an extra canon type stuff, books, TV shows, um, video games, stuff like that. Um, so I, to casual fans that didn't really make an impact on the overarching story and they still just enjoyed it as a TV show. Um, and obviously with the dark saber at the end, casual fans are just like, Ooh, that looks cool. Um, they don't really need to know any of the lore and the story behind that. And so I think that we're going to get a lot of that, um, here in season two, where there's definitely going to be a whole lot of lore, um, 
there's going to be a whole lot of lore, and I think that all that lore is going to just keep tying into um, Mando continuing to search to bring you know the child back to the Jedi, um, and to you know bring her to bring him to his, his his bigger destiny and what you know the child is meant to be with the with the Force powers that he has. So uh, I think that that's definitely where this season is going to go. I think everybody really agrees on that. Um, as of like specific plot point predictions, other than outside of cameos, I don't really have any that can come to the top of my head. Um, I would have, like I said, you know, like we said before, a couple weeks ago, I would have had a whole detailed plot on how I think this series is going to end. But right now with the confirmation of a season three and knowing that there's going to be more left, knowing that Mando can't die in the season and knowing that um, the child can't be reunited with the Jedi during the season to me I just there's no really like glaring predictions that I could have that would make a real big impact because we kind of already know um, you know what we're going to get at the end of it it's almost like watching the Clone Wars season 7 where you know what's on the other side obviously you know somehow Ahsoka survives and you know somehow Maul survives so you're watching that lightsaber fight just wondering how it all went down um, and that's kind of of, and you know Rex survives and whatnot so I think that that's kind of how I'm going into this season is kind of knowing that we are still going to get to an another side like at the end of episode eight where the child is still alive and hasn't been reunited with his people and Mando's still alive and you know he is still working to reunite the child with his people could we see um Cara Dune um maybe get dropped off at some point maybe could we see um i always i know every single time we talk about this freaking show i can't remember carl weathers character's name i can't remember him oh my god oh griff carga Gr grief carga griff carga whatever grief carga um so grief carga um you know one of them could get dropped off obviously we're gonna have the main plot point um with um moff gideon um, and with the dark saber and trying to chase him down, and the the, the dark saber should be a big uh, uh, point of uh, of this plot. Um, and obviously, Mando is going to be working to reunite the child with his people, and then also the Mandalorian lore about the dark saber and Moff Gideon trying to chase this child is, is gonna is gonna be very influential in this season as well. Um, and, and so you know, that's really kind of my broader, um, general, more vague predictions that I have for this season. Um, you know, there's not really too many specifics that I can think of right now because at this point, um, I, I don't really know what to expect with how we're how they're going to bridge the gap from the end of season one to setting up a season three, which very well could be the, the you know the last two rather finale of this show. Um, so you know, I don't really know how they're going to do the stuff in between. And, you know, I just can't wait to find out because you know, by the time you guys are watching this, it'll be four or five days until we get um the first episode of the season and i just absolutely can't wait and i know most of the star wars fan fandom um you know thinks the same way um and all right so captain if you want to just give some of uh you know your kind of vague general predictions onto what you think the plot is going to be you know maybe some of the stuff revolving around the mandalorian lore and the dark saber um and like i said you know before when i was talking just keep the cameos out of it because that's going to be the that's going to be the next topic uh, that's gonna be the next one. Ooh, all right okay. I know. Without the cameos, it's very hard to think, right? Because <laughs> the cameos are going to be so influential. Because I, I, can, like, I, can, well, you know, I can do what I did before for like, uh, season one where I predicted what every episode would be, but I'm not going to do that because I was funnily enough right. Um, <laughs> um, Jesus Christ, I was so accurate on that. It was unbelievable. Let's think. Uh, right, so I think cameos aside... I have no idea. Yep, that's it's kind of how I think at this point. <laughs> um, yeah. Without cameos, because uh, you know some episodes are probably going to be heavy cameo based. Yeah, for sure. Like the episode five with Dave, Dave Filoni is supposed to be directing episode five. That's probably where we're getting Ahsoka, but we'll we'll save that for the next. We'll save that for the next section. I I, I really cannot actually think of anything because mm -hmm. I would have. To I know I would go off on a tangent and be like, oh yeah, and then this is where someone would walk in and like, yeah. I really cannot think of the best way to describe it without cameos in it. It All right. is actually that difficult. Yeah. I know, I know what some episodes are going to be. I, I just, from watching the trailer, I know exactly what some episodes are going to be. Mm -hmm. But I don't know where they're going to pop into it. That's all. Oh, it's really, it, you boggled my mind now. Because I've always been, every time I think of an episode, I'm always thinking, right, okay, so this person will pop up here and this person will pop up here. Yeah. And 
So, all right. So you know what? Let's just go straight into the cameos then. So since you were since you were just talking about it and it's all in your mind, why don't you give your some some of your thoughts on where the cameos are going to come in and who we're going to see in the season? And then after you, I'll talk before we uh, wrap it up here. All right. Well, we know we're getting Soka. Yes. We know we're getting Rex. We know those two. That's most likely season five, the one done by Dave Lloyd. That's like a shoe-in, okay? Dave Lloyd's doing something, and there they are. It'll be like, pop, there we go. Here's Soka. Here's Rex. Uh, let's have a think. We're going to get... Now, we, would, we, we might get a sit. I doubt I don't, I don't we'll get a sit. Ooh. That woman in the dark hood from the first trailer. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't even see that, and I definitely doubt that as well. She might just be a bounty hunter or someone keeping her eyes. Um, because I can now prop you three episodes? Four episodes. There's four episodes long, okay? That I know. So the, every time we see an exit and then the ice on it, same episode. Every time we see <laughs> spikes and uh, grief cargo with thingy on the ash planet, same episode. Mm -hmm. uh, every time we see the fishing village, which is the same place with the woman in the, uh, the dark hood, and him in the fighting arena, same episode. So those are the three episodes right there. We know the Dave Filoni episode is going to be one of them. That's four. So four out of eight episodes, we know where we're going to be. We know what's going to happen a little bit from the trailer. So I think... Oh... First, first, uh, first, first episode, episode we won't get a cameo. cameo. That, that will most likely be the Ice Planet or him going to talk to Green Carter and, and doing the uh, and possibly doing the prison break, break which, which would theoretically then put the second or the third episode of the one on the Ice Planet, Planet with the X-wing where we get chased. The uh, I think the, the woman on the fishing planet is going to give Mando because he's trying to find some Mandalorian. We, we, we know that from the trailer. trailer. So, so I, I think, think she might be like, I know where some Mandalorians are, go talk to this, this guy. guy. Which sends him to the fighting arena where there might be a Mandalorian who technically is no longer a Mandalorian because he might have had his helmet removed, kind of like a, like a, like a loot door. Mm -hmm. no longer a loot door. Yeah. So that might happen. And then I'm thinking we're going to get Boba Fett, because the fake Boba Fett, not the real Boba Fett, or maybe the fake and real Boba Fett. At the same time, yeah. Flash. Uh, hold on. Uh, I, we keep blanking on names when we talk about this freaking show. I'm trying to think of the name of the. Uh, oh, Cobb Vanth is the name of the fake Boba Fett, yes. Yeah, him. They will most likely get them either episode four or episode six. Hmm. We can't get them early on because that would be a waste. And we can't get them later, uh, past uh, episode six because there would be absolutely no use for them unless. Um, What's the best? Uh, the Moff Gideon hires the new, newly escaped Boba Fett. Like, he goes to hire the fake Boba Fett, and then he's like, yeah, I'll do the job. And then the fake Boba Fett, you know, fails the job or just doesn't do it and claims to have done it. In which point, the real Boba Fett hears about it and turns up and potentially kills the other dude and goes, no, I'm actually the real Boba Fett. I'll do the job now. And goes off and does the job and tries to get the child mm -hmm. at which point if that is episode six ahsoka and rex are most likely nearby so they'll be helping protect the little baby and i i'm guessing they'll be in two episodes with the possibility of a small brief holographic cameo later on uh boba fett won't die uh, i know that one they can't get rid of boba fett they, they didn't anger everybody if they were just like oh yeah the yeah if they just brought him back yeah just brought him back to kill him immediately yeah most likely Boba Fett will be in towards the end of the season, so he can possibly they have the possibility of playing a bad guy in season three. Or Mandalorian will be like, you're wearing Mandalorian armor, you know, you should be a Mandalorian. Work with me. Let's form a you know brotherhood pack. Let's fist bump and do all some awesome handshake and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That might happen. And I think uh, there's going to be one more cameo, and I think it might be. A Jedi, but, but I don't, don't know who would play the Jedi. The only two I could think of would be Mace Windu, but I doubt they would be able to keep hiring um, Samuel Jackson a secret. Oh yeah, and Samuel Jackson would probably give that away in in, in yeah. some form. Or because they're doing an Obi Wan TV, Obi Wan as a Force ghost played by you and McGregor. That um, that I mean, listen. No matter, no matter how outlandish a prediction could be, anything that has you and McGregor in it, I, I don't, I don't care. I mean, I'm fine with it. I don't care in what capacity. It, Obi Wan could show up and slice Baby Yoda's head off, and as long, as long, as long as we see you and McGregor, 
I think it's a fine trade off, to be honest with you. I think it's I think it's a good swap if we get if we get Ewan McGregor as long as if you and McGregor goes baby Yoda, I think it'd be a perfect spot. Um, but yeah, g- can continue your point. There. I just wanted to make that. I, I, I definitely think because we're getting the um, the you and McGregor Obi Wan series, him appearing maybe just as an ethereal voice, okay, but him coming back to play the role of Obi Wan would be the perfect way to do it. Right. We know you haven't played Obi Wan in a while. You kind of need to get back into the role of Obi Wan for the TV shows that we're doing with you. How about we appear on the Mandalorian as like either a force ghost talking to a Jedi that, you know, that the baby Yoda, they come up to with baby Yoda and they're going, I can't take him, I'm a Jedi, it'd be in too much trouble, you look after him taking to this place. And then Obi-Wan going, you've done the right thing, something like that. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Or Obi-Wan as, a, as an ethereal kind of uh, ghostly Obi-Wan popping out going, listen, you're doing the right thing, Mando, but don't go this way. Here's a bit of like force wisdom. Try this instead. I think that would be the best cameo. Mm-hmm. No, we're getting uh, what's uh, Rosario Dawson, is it? Yeah, Rosario Dawson. Uh, Rosario Dawson is supposed to be playing Ahsoka. And I cannot, I cannot pronounce the name of the guy who plays Django Fett. Um, Tamara Morrison. Tamara Morrison, that's it. Uh, mm-hmm. Man, we're so bad with names when it comes to the show. It's un- it's only the show. It's unbelievable how bad we are with names. We can't remember the actor or we can't remember the name of the character in the show. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, th- I think we'll get four cameos. We'll get the two from Dave Filoni, and then there's the possibility of someone we know from either the Jedi or the Sith or maybe something like that or, uh, or anything like that, and we'll get a Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Those are my predictions for the cameos along the story line. All right, so I mean that kind of that brings me to um, to to my cameo predictions here. I think that definitely, you know, Ahsoka is going to come about at some point. Um, I think it'll be in episode five. I also think that Ahsoka would bring Rex along with her, um, and also, um, well, actually, not necessarily Rex would be there 100, percent but um, definitely um, Sabine Wren uh, would 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 come along too. There, um, I believe that there has been like heavy rumors that um uh i wait is she the she's the one who's oh, she's the one who's voiced by katie oh, no that's bo katan bo katan is voiced by katie sackoff bo katan's uh character design was based off of katie sackoff because when when you know you have a main vocal artist that they choose the vocal artist for a specific character they model the character's looks obviously after that um voice actor like you know the guy who plays uh, ezra bridger the voice is ezra bridger Ezra's facially designed off of him. Um, so, okay. so Katie Sackoff um, has been rumored and, and not quite confirmed, but rumored just as much as, as Rosario Dawson is, where the point where it's pretty much confirmed that they're in the cast, but like, you know, Disney hasn't came out and said that they're in the cast, so it's technically not 100% confirmed. Um, but, you know, very heavily rumored and not even heavily speculated because it's basically confirmed um, that Katie Sackhoff is in um, the cast, you know, the cast list, one of the cast members um, for episode – for uh, season – um two here so that would mean that sabine red would definitely uh be in it um the last that we know um of ahsoka and sabine is that um you know from what we got like that shot at the end of rebels which i think was like so, right after return of the jedi so that would be right around the same time that this season yeah, that mandalorian's happening so um that the two of them um you know they kind of went off um ezra is you know kind of on his own way um you know we know obviously rex was in the battle of endor um which has now you know been confirmed as canon um and so rex was in the battle of endor so we don't know kind of where he went if he went into you know something with the new republic there how he's going to factor into this but i think we'll definitely get rosario dawson as ahsoka katie sackoff as uh bo katan uh, katie sackoff as bo katan and then um somebody is sabine wren i remember there was somebody who was listed in the cast who had very similar uh looks to to sabine wren um so people were thinking that that would be uh that you know that that, that would be sabine's way of getting into the show um so sabine wren ahsoka um bo katan and then uh bo katan obviously would would come into play and sabine would come into play you know revolving around probably the dark saber and the mandalorian lore because obviously they are you know from the planet um, and they have they you know both of them held the dark saber at some point so they could be involved in the plot line that that revolves around moth gideon um you know i i think that ha- kind of how you know that uh, i'll get back to the other people i think can make it a cameo in a second i just don't want to forget to make this point um I, I think how they can weave um 
the Mandalorian lore and the dark saber into the story is um, Mando somehow um, somehow encountering, and it also brings Ahsoka into the story. Somehow encountering um, Sabine, um, and I think when he encounters Sabine, and she will see as him being a Mandalorian, obviously they'll have some sort of connection. Um, maybe you know something about the dark saber will come up. Maybe Sabine will say how how her people lost, or Bo-Katan or whoever lost the boat. I, I think Bo-Katan had it last in Rebels before Moff Gideon now has it. Um, so obviously, you know, she'll say somehow about Moff, you know, them losing the dark saber and Moff Gideon having it, and then you know Mando would know who Moff Gideon is. I mean, they kind of make that connection, and then Mando would obviously tell her about the child and and what he and you know what his job is, and then maybe Sabine could say, you know, I I know a Jedi. And then he brings the the child to Ahsoka. So I think that's kind of how they can weave. I think Sabine is almost the key to weaving in the Ahsoka plotline and the the dark saber plot line that would involve bo katan and moff gideon because i think that sabine is kind of the bridge in between those two um and i think that all they have to do is just have mando encounter sabine in episode five with dave filoni or in episode four and then ahsoka is introduced in episode five or maybe i mean you know that could be a few episodes that could be almost a little mini arc where let's say in episode two or episode three um you know mando encounters sabine at some somehow some way um and then the you know they have you know an episode together then the next episode is something about the dark saber and then bo katan and then the one after that is him you know searching for clues with ahsoka and whatnot and trying to reunite the child with with the jedi and obviously you know we see in the trailer some shots of ilum so that could obviously be something that ahsoka told him a place that ahsoka told him to go to kind of study the jedi and and whatnot and and see if that you know baby yoda has any sort of reactions to these these places that are powerful with the force and powerful with the jedi for so long um so then you know back to just the specific people that i think can make a cameo um i definitely think um captain rex played by tomorrow morrison and also boba the original boba fett played by tomorrow morrison could both make uh cameos um and then you know this Cobb vanth guy who i wouldn't necessarily really say is a cameo all we know of him so far is is, is his presence in the aftermath uh, trilogy of books um i forgot the name of the town that he runs but i believe it's some deserted town um out on Tatooine or, or some, I, I think it might be Tatooine. I don't know, or it could just be relating it back to Episode Five because we saw him on Tatooine. Um, so he own, you know, he's in some deserted uh, desert town um, that he kind of runs. Uh, so you know, I, I think that, that you know those are all the cameos that we can get. That's a whole lot of cameos. Um, it's going to be cameos galore. We might not get all of them, but as of like right now. All, every single one of those has been heavily rumored and has had a cast member link to it. So, um, you know, they, they're not 100% credible, all of them, but, you know, they're very plausible and obviously would not be shocked if any of those happen because, you know, all of them have cast members who are in the cast of Mandalorian Season 2 um, linked to their specific character and would have some sort of way of fitting into the story. Um, so I think, you know, that that... You know, I think that definitely that that wraps up my little talk on uh, on the cameo section. And before we wrap up, you know, the show here, Captain, I know you said that you thought of a point, kind of when I was talking. Do you want to talk about that a little bit or no? Yeah. So you mentioned Ezra. I think he might be a cameo. Oh, Ezra. See, I I mean, I I was thinking that too, but I don't necessarily know how they could weave him into this. Um, I I guess they could weave him in with Ahsoka and. Yeah, I, I guess they could weave him in with Ahsoka somehow or, or, you know, trying to reunite with the Jedi and if Ezra is a Jedi. Um, then that would also create kind of a thing like where's Ezra in the sequel trilogy um, unless like Ezra comes in the show and dies at, at a young age. Um, you know, we don't know if Ezra Ev, Ezra had experiences. We don't know if Edward, Ezra had experiences with Luke Skywalker. Um, so obviously that would have to line up you know during this time too so i don't know i I, i've heard the same things about ezra but in my opinion it's a little bit of like a touchy shady um cameo and i don't necessarily know how they could go about doing that well i mean he he first walks away with thrawn we We know that thrawn yeah he actually ends up dying later on in a Yeah. 
Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to think here. Uh, Rebels, how many... I, I don't know how many... I, I guess he's a teenager in Rebels. How many years? Let's just say he's... Let's just... Yeah, let's just say he's 18, because yeah. that's, you know, that's what Luke was. I believe that was r what Ray was, too. So, if he's 18, Rebels, um, I, c I can't, I guess maybe, I think Rebels maybe takes place, like, maybe, maybe around five years, I want to say, before A New Hope. So, then if we say five years, five years, and then add, uh, add four years, so five years, then add four years to the end of episode six, because the original trilogy takes place over four years, because three years in between four and five, then one year in between five and six. So then add four, so that's nine years, and then um, add another five years to get to the, the timeline of Mando. So, yeah, so he'd be in his, yeah, he'd be, yeah, early to mid-30s. Really yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that yeah, the voice actor's pretty similar in age. Yeah. Um yeah, I definitely you know that that definitely could be done. Um I I, I guess they that that have to be I feel like that'd have to be a lot more of a major cameo. They would have to develop a lot of plot kind of around Ezra in order to weave him in. I think even such a major character like Ahsoka, there's ways to kind of just weave her in there to the point where it's not like she doesn't captivate the show and take it over. Um, I think with Ezra that might be a little bit different. I think there might be have to there might be a little bit uh you know different ways that they have to kind of weave him in there. Um, but you know I definitely think that's an interesting point. And that would be pretty cool if um if Ezra does you know make a cameo in here. But um yes yeah, so, I mean that kind of does it. That kind of wraps it up um for our talk here our, our our Mandalorian season two preview. Um we've been waiting to do this show ever since you know we started this podcast back in um January, and you know here we are. Um, we're going to be reviewing every single episode, uh, every single week for the next eight weeks. You guys will be getting Mandalorian content. Um, every single, you know, the episodes all come out on Fridays and we'll be reviewing them, um, on the following Monday as we release every single chosen ones episode. Um, you know, the last two episodes, we did some star Wars squadrons gameplay, which is really fun. If you guys want to go back, uh, and check out, you know, that gameplay, um, you know, those are some two pretty good let's plays that, that did pretty well, um, on, on, here on the channel. Um, and so if you guys want to go, you know, check out that, if you're a little up in the air and whether or not to get squadrons, you can go and see some, some let's play, uh, gameplay footage of that, um, in order to help, you know, make a decision whether or not you want to drop $40 on the game and whether or not it's enough content for you. Um, so yes, I mean, that, that pretty much does it. Um, and yeah, so we'll see you guys next week for, uh, the, uh, review, our review of Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1. Man, it feels good to say that. Alright, see you guys next week.